So what does it look like for Christians or for the church to love the LGBTQ community like Jesus does? Or maybe just do better caring for our friends and family and neighbors who are part of the LGBTQ community, even if those Christians or that church has a traditional view of marriage and sexuality. Well, at the Good Complex podcast, we talked to Bill Henson, founder of Posture Shift, an organization dedicated to wrestling with some of those issues. This is a portion of that conversation. We would all agree that LGBT plus community are people to be loved, not people to be judged. Yes. Um, and that's our kind of our jam here at the Good Complex, whether Christianity is your thing or yes. something else. But um, that said, uh, you know, in Christianity, there are there are strains of Christianity that um, believe that, you know, anything goes kind of when it comes. Hey, just figure out your sure. own sexuality and do your thing. And then there's a strain of Christianity that says, well, you know, there is a an ethic that that Jesus affirms about sex being in the context of marriage between a man and a woman. And that's right. not about orientation. That's about sexual activity. But yep. um, but talk about that a little bit, because I think that's elephant in the room in this conversation. Yeah. <laughs> it's like you were talking about loving LGBT people and the transgender thing a little bit different, but you're talking about LGD, LGBT people, and yes. yet you have this ethic that, you know, you have, a, 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 from what I understand, a traditional yes, ethic when it comes correct. to sexuality and marriage. So. Yeah. Let's just talk about how can you claim yeah. to love gay people and then yeah. you know, have that ethic. So first of all, I, it's indisputable that LGBT people have been hurt very deeply by people of faith. And that's just one example. Um, after the Pulse shooting, 49 people murdered, 53 others injured. Um, most churches in Orlando wrapped their lives around the surviving families of mm -hmm. victims and around survivors, and lit, paid for burials, flew family from Latin America, counseled family, because their family was often learning not just that their loved one died, but that that meant their loved one was gay, and they had never known. And the church just did some amazingly beautiful things. Yeah. But there was one voice on Christian radio and internet radio that effectively said, we just wish that club would have been bigger so that, you know, God could have done away with more of wow. those uh, homosexuals. And, you know, like most Christians don't even know that. Yeah. I don't know an LGBT person around the world that doesn't didn't hear that voice. So, you know, like there's even an, ex an, an expression of faith that's even more extreme, you know, than just holding to... A traditional view mm -hmm. you know there can be people that weaponize that yeah. belief so from my perspective the question is this level playing field does someone with a traditional view have a better standing with god than someone who doesn't <laughs> mm -hmm. i don't think so right <laughs> uh i don't think so um god uh, jesus was very clear you know there's no room for any kind of judgment and if you if you establish a measure that you know like uh, you, this is the base upon which God will have nothing to do with you. Oh, be careful, because <laughs> watch out what you're doing in your own life. That measure may come back to be applied toward you. And uh, so, I just I just think that um, the rubber meets the road. The love and the genuineness of it will be proven. One action one attitude one word one commitment to care to protect to conclude to include at a time and so the fact that lgbt people might say hey, how could i ever trust you know a family member or a pastor or a church or a ministry with a traditional view i'd say yeah you have every right to have that kind of suspicion uh i would be suspect too oh and i hope you'll measure love based on the love that is actually happening rather than the belief gap. In other words, yeah. a lot of people would like to just simplify it, say there's a belief gap and there's side A, side B. And if you're on the traditional side, you are automatically hateful and I could never feel safe around you. Well, I mean, that's been proven untrue over and over again yeah. through tangible acts of love, care, inclusion, protection. Yeah. 
So I would say the onus is not on LGBT people to just say, trust, trust us. The onus is on people of faith that hold that belief to prove that they're not out to condemn, to judge, to weaponize their belief against, to battle against the civil rights of, uh, to look away when harm is being done to LGBT people. Uh, if we have a high commitment to include, to accept in the church, to accept in our families, to protect when harm occurs, then we will earn a trust and we can have a mutual relationship with people where they know we genuinely love them. Yeah. And I know your commitment is we just love you no matter what. That was just part of a really fascinating conversation. If you would like to catch the whole thing, follow the link. Also, be sure to like and subscribe to this channel for other uh, great conversations around mental health and cultural topics and a lot of important issues.